Okay, so we're back at our new location. This time we're not in the dark. <laughs> and we yes. have quite a few hours of sunlight and tide time left. So um, let's, let's get to it. We're very excited yeah. because I imagine we miss a lot in the dark. Yeah. We walked over lots of treasures. So hopefully today we'll see them. <laughs> so we'll see you on the first find. Bye. Some sort of medicine vial. Just come across this chappy. No head though, of course there's no head. It's a guy. It looks like he was holding something. Look, there's a hole through his hand. Got a tail coat on. Oh, what a shame his head's missing. I'm not sure if I'll take that because I only have so much room in my bag. <laughs> I think I see another cod marble down here. It looks a bit small. Oh no, it's not. It's not a cod marble. It's a, it's a burnt playing marble. Look at that. It's very burnt up, but it is an antique marble. How cool is that? Look much better after it's cleaned up. I'm not sure what this is, but it looks like a cabochon. Oh, it is. Oh, look at that. I think it's a glass cabochon. Oh, I like that. Let me zoom in. Oh, I am zoomed in. I think it's made to look like opal. See how it's been treated on the back like that. It's faux opal. I like it. Pretty pottery. Look at that. Oh, and down here, what's this? <laughs> it's a pipe bowl. Just sitting there. Potential mushroom. What's this down here? It's a beautiful coloured bottle stopper. Look at that. That's gorgeous. I almost ignored this because I thought it was a berry. But I think it's a bead. Wow, here we are looking for glass to make these and I find this beautiful red bead, it looks like a berry, wow, it's lovely. Look at this tiny little bottle, it's so small. Oh, the top snapped, but you know what? I'm going to keep it. I could grind the top down. A vulcanite bottle stopper with something written on it, which I can't read right now. A bit of pottery down here and it's got a little person on it. Look at that! <laughs> oh I love it! It's broken in the perfect place. Zoom in, hang on. There he is, a little man. Oh, I think this was an escutcheon cover. It's a ceramic one. It's broken. But you know what? It looks like a fish, so I'm going to take it. This time it is a berry. 
There are bottles here, but look at this. Next to these bottles. Oh no! It's a broken Cupid doll. Oh no. That's such a shame. Where's the rest of it? This little fat tummy. Just found a another quad marble. What's mum fat? Oh, it's just the face. Oh, I like that. You can make a necklace out of it. Pull these two things out of this, this bit of bank here that's collapsing. But this says flag, flag brand, little sauce bottle. And this looks like a little girl or a little boy look holding their feet. But unfortunately he or she no longer has a head and is missing a hand. Poor thing. An interesting find here, it's a pipe stem, it's a very short pipe stem. And it is called the workman and it has the workman on both sides, look. And these short stemmed pipes were used, well, for workmen. Coal miners and builders and labourers, people like that. And they needed a short pipe so it wouldn't get in the way of what they were doing. So it's only a few inches long really, but normal pipes are a little longer than that. So that's an interesting find. Shame the bowl is missing. It's got an eight on the bottom, but it's an almost complete doll's dish. It's just got a tiny chip out of it. They're always very cute to find. And we've got a little collection of them now actually. So it looks like this here, that I found, would have been a ceramic egg. And you would use these as dummy eggs to put in the nest box, your hen's nest boxes, to encourage them to lay. And we have some of these at home, actually, some whole ones. Well, I also saw this poor doll, poor broken up doll, look. giant pipe bowl. It's huge. Look at all this stuff. Okay, I've just found, found something amazing down here. Here, look, and I think it might be whole because I can see its head. be a little bit damaged <laughs> but that's amazing it's like terracotta how cute I wonder what that is off or well, out of maybe a doll's house or something that's so cute I love it oh I've also found a vulcanized rubber bottle stopper and this tiny little bottle and I love tiny little bottles so that's always good but bad news is I've lost my scrapey thing I think it's fallen out of my bag in there. Ooh, it looks like a tiny little pipe bowl down here and it kind of has a fluted design which I've never seen before we don't have a pipe like this, or a whole pipe like this. It's quite a small bowl. It might have been a child's bubble pipe or something like that. I don't know, but it's very, it's very pretty. Okay, look at this. This is beautiful. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely. 
Look at the colour of that. Could use some to make beads with, but to be honest, I could cut that and make pendants. It's so pretty. A tiny mother of pearl button. Zoom in. There it is. It's so delicate, you can see it's, the white's coming off on my fingers. Get very crumbly. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? It's an alley gob five stone thing. Oh wow. I love finding these. I just love them. We've got quite a collection now. Yay! I found the letter H. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Get it? It's actually made of metal. It's stamped into brass. Just an H. Oh, it's got a, a thing on it. Blow it off. the bead and then I spotted this clay pipe bowl but I use both hands look at this like the back of the pipe bowl can you see that it looks like it's been filed away or cut away from the back of the bowl which is unusual never seen that before I wonder if it's been made like that or someone's done that to it after it's been made interesting. I just picked up these two little guys. They look like praying nuns or children. They're on their knees praying. I wonder what it was part of exactly. I think these are my very first dentures or remains of dentures. There's no teeth in there, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> oh no. That's a bucket list find. Sounds a bit weird, but dentures are a bucket list find. Looks like more scrap is great. I'm collecting copper and brass at the minute for a project I'm hoping to do in the future. Pottery is of course are so pretty as well. Look at this one. I've got a bit of a <laughs> got a bit of a clay marble as well in my hand. But look how pretty that little tiny shard is with the flowers on it. Because of course we, we like to cut these out and put a silver bezel on and make them into pendants. So I'm definitely on the lookout for pretty pieces like that. But I just saw this. Oh, is it a hole? Oh my gosh, this hole. Oh, it's got one tiny, tiny little chip out of it. Oh wow, look at that. Is that Spongera? I think it is. You see that? Spongeware. It's an incomplete little spongeware dish. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I didn't we didn't see this last time. It's just got the tiniest little chip there that we can quite easily fix. 
The rest of it's perfect. Oh, I think Mum's going to love that as well. We'd definitely put that on display in our house with some sea glass in it or something. Or maybe we can keep all our beads in it. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy with that. I didn't expect it. A little spongeware dish. It could be Victorian. One of my favourite things here. Little cogs. I love them. What's this? Another bead. Oh, this is a strange one. It's sort of cone shaped. It's meant to be like that, sort of cone shaped. Oh, that's interesting. It's sort of opalescent pink. Not found one like that before. I thought this little thing was gold when I first spotted it. I think it's a base metal though and it's been plated in gold. But it looks like the back, or reminds me of the, like the back of a clip-on earring. Probably had a pearl glued in there, like a fake pearl. I love this little scene. It's got a little stalk in the foreground. And little houses. This looks like it's by a lake or a river. I love it when they break off into these perfect little scenes. Oh, look! Look! Another one of our favourite finds. It's a cut glass bottle stopper. It was probably out of a beautiful perfume bottle since it's so small. Wow, that is really pretty. I love these. And see that top there would have been hand cut and polished. It's like a little mushroom. Oh no. It's a broken marble. Antique marble. Probably made in Germany in the 19th century. But unfortunately, it's been in a fire, which is why it's such in a bad way. Might be able to do something with it though. We don't often take the broken figurines these days because we don't have the space. But having said that, this one is so detailed. I mean, she's lost her head and, and her arm, her lower arm. But look, there's like a jug here. That's actually hollow. And look, she's holding a little lamb, which is so detailed. It's got a detailed little face. Look at it, how cute. And her hand, it's so detailed. I'm wondering if this is foreign. It's beautiful. I'm going to take it anyway. It definitely has a certain charm to it. It's so much, so much detail in there. you spot what I am looking at? It's very, very difficult to see. Can you see it? No. <gasps> yes! It's a pipe up, but it looks it. like it has something on it. What is it? It's a harp. Oh, it's it must be Irish. Big harp and oh, a, look, a shamrock. Clover. Shamrock, yes. Two shamrocks, I think, and a harp. And a harp. Oh, it must but be. But that's a... a big harp. I've never seen one like yeah, that. Yeah, no, with a massive harp on the end. And I love it. Two clovers. Yeah, never found one like that before. That's really, really cool. Yay! I don't know what it is. It's like ceramic. I'm pretty sure I've seen another mudlark find one of these before, but I can't for the life of me remember what it is or what they said it was. Well, actually, I found this. It's not glass. I think it's, it's a bead. It's a bead, but I don't think it's glass. I think it's ceramic. See that little bead? I think it is actually a ceramic bead, which is... I don't think I've ever found a ceramic bead before.
Oh, shame about this cup. See that lady, a beautiful lady. She's carrying a basket. She's got like something on her back, maybe. Wow. What a tree. Oh, and there's another lady. Oh, look. How beautiful. She's holding a flower. Oh, something on the bottom. Adams, Tokyo. Established 1657. Wow. Tunstall, England. I'm tempted to take that and perhaps cut out those beautiful ladies in there. Make jewellery even perhaps. Quite a few of those. These, um, I think they're Art Nouveau style. Keep finding bits of them and they're so pretty. You could make like a giant mosaic out of them. That would make a really funky floor, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, it's got like a J on the back. Actually, there are loads of entire complete tiles lying around. You could actually like, we could tile a room in our house with all the tiles that are lying around here. That would be a really cool project. Oh, look. Look on my feet, just, just uncovered. Can you see that tiny blue bead? There we go. <laughs> Another tiny blue bead. What a surprise. Oh, what's this? That looks like a button. Ah, oh, it is. It's a large... I have to put my little bead down. It's a large mother of pearl button. There we go. Found something. Still, we're heading back now, but there's still so much stuff lying around. Let's get down. Bit of an old light bulb. Oh, that's weird. What is this? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect it to be a face. This kind of creepy green face. Wow, she's got a fancy hat on. Look at that. <laughs> that was slightly unexpected. <laughs> it's very detailed though. It's an amazingly detailed face, even with all this green slime on it. this oh <laughs> it's a glass stopper daddy's and it's still got the cork on it how cool daddy's sauce oh I was just gonna get up and look look what I found it's another one of those dangly things chandelier drops or or off those vases Alex found one ages ago oh my goodness wow zoom in look at that it's beautiful it's still got its point on the end I love it There, look. A little button. A little glass button. Look! This tile has a little face oh, on it. Oh, Alex just found this tile with a face on it. It's like a man with a beard and he's got like a little hood on it. On him. It's like a monk or something. Oh, that's, that's so cool. I, did it. I found so many of these whole brown teapot lids. If anyone's missing a lid. Let me know.
I've got a bucket list find as well. <laughs> oh, that's sad, Alex. Yeah, but it has it no teeth. It doesn't even have teeth in it. I think they were a smoker. Mum suggested we go all Sherlock Holmes on this. Look on the inside of the mouth. It's all stained black at yeah. the front. It's all stained and like tarry looking. So it could have been um, a smoker, yeah. Yeah, look at that. That uh, is so horrible. I think it, these were the teeth of a smoker once upon a time. I actually picked this up and threw it back down, but Alex came along behind me and picked it I've up. I've never found <laughs> dentures before. I've always wanted to find but a set. there's no teeth in it. I know, but I took it anyway. I couldn't help it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we'll start <laughs> with our pottery. Oh, I really love this. I know. It looks it's, like a monk. Or it's something. a piece of a tile, and I think it would have been like maybe off a fireplace. Yeah, probably. Do you think fireplace tile? Yeah. And yeah, I love him. Look, this bloke. With, <laughs> with his, he's got a little beard, and he's got his, like a, looks like a cloak almost. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, and Some then some nice flowers on that one. Mostly transfer wear, apart from a bit of sponge wear. But yes, just look at this flowers. Flowers and birds and flowers and people, and yeah, it's and mostly a scene. oh, and a beautiful little scene. There's a stork on it and a house and a lake and I, I love that bit. Is That's that a, a good mill. Bit. Looks like a mill wheel. Oh, oh no, yeah. it might be a flower. Oh yes, yeah. it might be a stylized flower. Yeah. And this piece of lovely, um, probably Scottish spongeware. Yeah. Nice bit of spongeware. We'll be talking about spongeware a bit later. Yeah. And this lovely encaustic tile. Yeah, this is really nice. Probably from somebody's hallway. They were very popular in Victorian times. And I, I've got a bit of information here about encaustic tiles. So they are tiles where the pattern is created, not in the glaze, but by the use of different coloured clays. In Britain, they were first produced in the 13th century and lasted right through to the 16th century. They then came back into fashion during the Gothic Revival movement, which began from the 1740s in England and lasted through to the early 20th century. They are made by a pattern being embossed into the clay and the recess filled with slip of a different colour. The surface is then rubbed back to reveal the design. So um, yeah, that's they, really they cool. did it that way so that... In high traffic areas, like um, in medieval times in cathedrals and places like that, um, the pattern wouldn't rub away because it was yeah. um, deep into the clay. And as the tile wore away, the pattern remained. So yeah, because if you just like uh, painted a pattern on, it would just, just it would surface, just wear off. Like the yeah, surface just, pattern, like this, it would it's just very thin. So what an, what a cool idea! I think that's a really good idea of them to do that. And they're still making them today in the traditional old designs because people still like to have them in the hallways or have Victorian ones restored. They were mostly made in Staffordshire in, yeah. in, um, in England. Staffordshire's in the Midlands. Um, and uh, they still are. The other name is the Potteries. The Potteries, district, Because yeah. so much pottery was produced in that area. But it's got quite a lot of damage, this tile. But, you, you know, it's we could... pretty. You can see it how nice. the... Where yeah. the chip is, how the the pattern is still, is still in there. there yeah. yeah, where it's come away. That's it's really interesting cool. that this has sort of a blue spatter pattern on the yeah, other side. Yeah, it does. You can see maybe it where it's the been, clay. there's been like bits of blue clay in the mold. Maybe when they. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, moving on. Pipes, maybe pipes yeah. inside down here. We've got a grand pipe here. We have a great pipe. This pipe's cool. Um, and we, this is like our most second most common found patterned pipe, isn't it? Yeah. We, off, we harp, often find harps. <laughs> harp and shamrock um, is an Irish design. And probably very, very popular with the Irish workmen that came over to this country um, working on canals and things like that. Yeah, Irish navvies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they built the, well, they, they helped build the fourth bridge and... Yeah, loads of huge landmarks like that. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably that's a quite, that's a big hefty pipe. And it was probably made here in in the UK. Yeah, they produced them in um, for the in Irish. Britain. Yeah, especially yeah. for the Irish workers. So isn't that cool? It's a beautiful. It's a really There's like a detailed. On that one. It's a really detailed design. Unfortunately, no maker's mark. 
No. Probably the, was on the stem. Yeah, the stem's gone. Um, actually, here's a stem. The workman, and this would have been a um, what's called a cutty pipe. Um, and you can see just how short this this the length of this stem is. And um, yeah, I explained it in the video, but basically it was for workmen. <laughs> yeah, because it was shorter and didn't get in the way. Yeah, it didn't get in the way. It was more convenient when you're working, so that's cool. And um, it's plain... just a plain one. This one's interesting. Yeah, if anyone could tell us a little bit more about this and why it's it's got file marks on it. Can you see that? Could have been done later, yeah. um, just to stand the pipe up. Yeah, someone like I think someone's done that to the pipe afterwards. Look, you can see scraping marks. Maybe they've done it on a rock or something. So yeah, so they can. Um, there's look, this bit there. You see that sc scraping on the this? side as well. Yeah. You can see it much better in this uh, low winter sort of sun. Sits up nicely yeah, like it that. Does. <laughs> it's like they've done it deliberately. Yeah. To stand up their pipe. Maybe they were bored in the pub and just started grinding away at it. <laughs> so this little pipe's interesting because it isn't actually a tobacco pipe. You no. can see inside that it hasn't been burned. It's very difficult to see because there's shadows, but there's mud in there, but no burning, yeah. And um, it's of a ribbed design, and it's a children's bubble pipe. And um, children's bubble pipes were popular right from the early 18th century. Um, children used pipes... Um, to blow bubbles, um, and there are some examples in some paintings. And um, this has the ribbed design of a Napoleonic period pipe, which is interesting too. Yeah, that's cool. And it's funny because the last time we went, we found one as well. Ta da! <laughs> Mum yeah. found this one. And again, look, no burning inside. So we, yeah, we're pretty confident that these are children's, children's bubble, bubble pipes. pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, I had a bubble pipe when I was a kid, but it was um, plastic, plastic, but it was oh. still shaped like a pipe. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Um, marbles. <coughs> okay, so we've got two German uh, cane marbles. Um, <laughs> and yeah, pretty look, bad they're condition. pretty knackered on them. <laughs> They've been in a fire and have just but shattered. We've so, got yeah. an idea of something to do with them. Yeah, because they're glass. And Involving a kiln. Yeah, you know. Might know so. where we're going with that. Um, they're so pretty. It's a shame that they're just so, you know, knackered. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're more confident than ever that these are balls for um, baking, baking blind. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> we find lots of them, and they're all this similar size and kind of clay. And we they might have been used for industrial cleaning, like polishing. But um, since this is a domestic dump, I think... Yeah, yeah more likely to be. Yeah, so, yeah, I think we're Baking confident. Beans Baking beans or something. Baking balls. Beans? Baking beans. Oh, okay. Um, another glass thing we found. I turned the camera off accidentally when I... Yeah, I was filming it, it's and I didn't film this. Amazing big lens. <laughs> I love lenses. It's such a pity that it has this ding oh, in I it. Oh, I know. But um, I've done a bit of research, and because of its size, I think it might be the lens out of an old police lantern from the 1880s to the 1920s. And um, the early ones were whale oil bullseye lanterns, they're called. And they were used by the police and railway workers and also um, maritime purposes. And they were basically just little oil lamps. It's beautiful. So I think that's what that is from. Yeah, because um, we found torch lenses before. Yeah, but, but they're usually this is, smaller. Yeah, yeah, this is much bigger, so yeah. I love it though. I just I love lenses. I'd love to find one of those without the yeah um, without yeah. But we could we can transform this into a Christmas decoration. Maybe like you could glue an image onto the back, and it would like you know make that into magnify a face. it. It's like, it's like the the sun or moon look. Like. Yeah, <laughs> but little trees down here. Anyway, could do. <laughs> and look at this. This is just beautiful. This is the most amazing find because it's. Completely. Oh, look at the sparkles. Look, undamaged. They're all, the, they're all over the place. It's sparkles. Oh. It's so undamaged, and I can't believe how it could survive so well for probably over 100 years. Yeah, this is most definitely Victorian. Although we found it in a later dump, you've got to remember people were still chucking out 
Victorian stuff. Old yeah. Victorian stuff, even Georgian stuff. So you can still find all the things in later dumps. Um, but yeah, we found one of these in an, a Victorian dump, late Victorian dump. I found this one and mum found that one. So we got two now and you know what these look like? Christmas decorations. Definitely. They're ready-made Christmas decorations. Ah. But originally we think they were the crystals from around the edge of um, a vase. These crystals made specifically to go around the edges are very popular in Victorian times. They would have hung that way rather than that way to see the pattern. So yeah, they are very beautiful. They are. Look at it from that side. I know. Yeah, that's the way it would have hung, isn't that? Yeah, look, it's like 3D, isn't it? Yeah. So they've got loops on the top, and literally all we have to do is put a little bit of wire in there, jump ring or something, and a ribbon, and bam, we've got two beautiful Christmas tree decorations. And at Christmas you will see us hanging our decorations on our yes. tree. And over here we have more ceramics. This is, you've seen us find these many yeah. times. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a gobby. It's a five stone. It's I, a knuckle bone. <laughs> I like to call them knuckle bones. I think that's the one I'm going to set up. Alley gob. Uh, a jack. It's got lots of names. And there were, there were various different ways of playing this game as well. But yeah, we love finding them. And on the theme of games, there is a tiny torso of a soldier. <laughs> Wearing a little blue jacket, look. <laughs> you, you very rarely find these whole, but you know, you have a habit of collecting the pieces. <laughs> And some lovely cogs. Oh, yes. We love cogs. Yeah, we do. I don't do. know why, but we do. I think it's just the cogginess of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are very coggy. They are very coggy, aren't they? Yeah. And they're just like little wheels. I don't know. They're nice. And I could make things with them. Yeah, we should definitely... You should, we should do a jewellery making video of us making things with our cogs. And here is a H. Huh, a letter H. 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 -H. How would you like to say it? Um, and it's, I think, it's, has it been like maybe I no slotted? Idea. It looks like it's slotted into something. Maybe a name. It's been on that way. You no, know, you could change the letters to change the names of on a office a door, maybe door thing. Oh, yeah. You can see. Look, it's been enameled. It's got white enamel in those grooves. There see it and yeah so it's quite appropriate because h is our first letter of our surname yeah <laughs> so that was cool <laughs> that could easily be turned into jewelry i mean what can't we turn into jewelry to be honest um, this maybe <laughs> oh I don't you know think what i, I you know i i reckon well i, I could do it. turn it into jewelry but i wouldn't want to wear it you know you could do something real funky with that couldn't you no look it looks like a rainbow it's horrible <laughs> Complete, complete with its tobacco staining. Nicotine Yay. stains, yuck. <laughs> um, so, buttons. Buttons. We always find buttons. We do. And um, a cheeky little collar stud in the middle. So we've got glass and mother of pearl here, and basically. Actually, Alex has been doing something interesting I have, with these buttons. I have. Hold, hold up, let me show you. Ta-da! So I have been casting buttons into, well, solid silver buttons. And yeah, there's a before and after. <laughs> now it's solid silver. But how cute are they? But look how much it's shrunk from the original. I don't think that's the, that's quite the original one. Is it not? Oh. It was a little bit smaller. Um, but yeah, they are just magnificent. How cute. Are so they? cute. Are you going to make them into pendants? I think I'm going to make them into pendants, yeah. Or yeah. actually they would make great little earrings and they'd make great rings. They so could make... do a necklace with more than one on. Oh yeah, like a button necklace, and yeah, so finally found something to do with the buttons. Cast them into silver! So yeah, I think I might do a little bit of a video. Yeah, definitely. Okay, next up's our beads. We have a lovely little child's toy dish. We do. Full of juicy little beads. Beady treasures. Ah. And this is a cabochon. This is cool, that yeah. That I found. And you see, it It looks a bit like um, an opal. But it's, it's a faux, faux opal. It is. The back has been like textured and then covered in some sort of It looks like coating. pearlescent uh, paint of some yeah, kind. To make it look... Opaly. Like an opal. <laughs> I love opals and I think it's beautiful. Definitely so, have to turn that... I think you should turn that into a ring. 
Yeah, we should make we'll that see. Into look, something. doesn't it look very opening? It's very convincing. Um, and then there's this cone-shaped bead, yeah. which I've looked up. I think it's Czech, um, Czech class bead. Most beads are. <laughs> yeah, they are, to be honest. Um, and um, I've seen them on nineteen nineteen twenties and nineteen thirties necklaces as well. This cone-shaped bead design. So um, yeah, I might put some pictures on the screen of that. And then you're just little seed beads. Oh, you thought this was a berry? That's. Is it a bead or is it a berry? And, and this was... one turned out to be a bead. But it looks so berry like, doesn't it? Very nearly missed that. Um, but yeah, molded beads, one? wound glass beads, and, yeah, a, ceramic and a ceramic bead. bead. So, so quite yeah. a selection of beads there. As usual, go on our bead string. So here, moving on to our obligatory body parts. <laughs> yeah. Um, we love body parts. We Look, do. These two Who both, doesn't? They've both lost the same leg. Yeah, these are the remains of Cupido. Yeah, because that a little belly on there. <laughs> oh, bless it. And it says foreign. foreign on the back of this one. So we're, that, uh, that um, for sure, that dump um, is really in Cupido kind of era. Yeah, era. Like 1920s, 1930s. Yeah, so we're definitely... Yeah, in the 20s and 30s, they were really... Although I love that this. dump sort of... Sp- Goes Look, right through his little bottom it? sticking out. The bottom, like. <laughs> it's like wearing a dress, like it's bottom sticking out. I think it's like a petticoat. Yeah, like a vest. <laughs> and we've got a cupid doll face as well. And it oh, had oh, that's not a oh. cupid doll face. That's just a regular doll face. Is it? Cupid dolls are unmistakable. Oh, they're quite ugly, really. <laughs> oh, it's a very similar clay, though. Look, it is. It's exactly the same. But yeah, there's a creepy old face. It's not actually too creepy, actually. It's quite cute. No, I quite like that. It's actually, like a actually quite a nice boy, face. A little boy's face. Yeah, it had painted eyes, but they came off when we washed it. But it's also perfect for a necklace, just the way it's per- yeah, broken so yeah, perfectly. Yeah. And this head... <laughs> I quite like this head. I do. I like her... Um, uh, the whole Napoleon thing she's got, she's got going on there. Classic look about her. Uh, yeah, her Napoleon yeah, Bonaparte this, hat. This fabulous hat. I had no idea. When I first saw it, I was so confused. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it was, it was this down. way, and you were like, and I was like what, what is this? Is <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a little green face looking at me. But she might have come off a flat back because of the way it's broken. It's been on something flat. So, Staffordshire flat back, maybe? A curl face is actually really pretty. Look. She's, it is. She's got no eyeballs, but she's really pretty. There's more can be said for this. Oh, yeah, look. This looks like a piece of modern art with its... Solid. It looks like a piece of... Mo- <laughs> modern art, that's what that is. That should be in a gallery. It's actually... Another doll, doll art part, yeah. This is actually um, a shepherdess. Yeah, figurine. this is... This is, um, I actually think this is amazing. This is probably the most detailed figurine we've found. Um, it's been hand molded and shaped in parts. It's not just been pressed into a mold. It's been, you know, it's got like those details on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll definitely have to put some pictures on the screen of the details like this fountain here with the lion and even the little face of the lamb and just her dress. I, I love it. I think it might be, I think it's foreign. Yeah. Um, it's not been made in the, in in England or Britain. But I love it, so. And then, oh, <laughs> we've got this. It looks like two little praying angels. Yeah. They're on their knees praying. Are they nuns? I don't it's know. so sweet. I think they might, because it's broken here. I'm wondering if there was a cross yeah. coming up here. And Somebody. then there's, there's two women it's off praying something. or angels praying. At... But it's broken off just at this point. Part so yeah. that might make a good Christmas decoration. Yeah, actually. it would actually. We can do something with that. And finally, in our China collection, 
this oh, amazing this. little dog. I love this. And actually, since um, filming this video, we have found something. another one. But not, uh, a, not a dog. Not a dog, but something same else. Size, but the same terracotta clay. It's absolutely amazing. It's more amazing than, than the dog. I've actually made a cast of it. But yeah, I love this little doggy. But its face is... We think it might be something to do with... Um, Cake decorations. Yeah, because... And we can't find any information about these little um, terracotta. It's terracotta colour, but it's more like pipe clay. It's yeah. like terracotta coloured pipe clay. But yeah, we think it might be for cake decoration. Yeah, I think. because there were a lot of the, the cream clay um, made into cake decorations. Very yeah. Very popular in Victorian times. Anyway, I absolutely love it. Great find. Okay, and our bottle stopper collection of which we always have some yes we do here's a garston's sauce it would have been hp sauce yep in there um plain most of the others are plain what's this one daddy's daddy's sauce but that it's got its cork on it it's still got its cork what good circles that do it fits there oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 <laughs> oh gosh look it fits it fits there Ta-da! <laughs> no, that's not a sauce bottle. No, it's not. It's not really. I don't. I don't know what kind of bottle it was. Maybe some kind of polish bottle. But um, and then we've got this beautiful cut glass stopper that is either out of a perfume bottle or a vinegar bottle, I think. And it's very. Um, it's sort of halfway to being sea glass, so it must have been in the river for a while. Yeah. Um, so it's not shiny and it's not matte. It's sort of halfway between. But we love stoppers. We've got a lovely little collection of them now, including our heart stopper. And this looks like a fish. That's why I picked it up. Yeah. But it's <laughs> actually an escutcheon cover from a, a door lock. So it's yeah, I'm going to be making that into a oh, fish. Oh, look, wait. You could get one of those little beads. And look. Ta da instant fish. Instant fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is called crested ware. And someone from up here in the north had been down to Folkestone in Kent for their holly bobs. Maybe back in the 1920s. So I have a little bit of information about crested ware. So this was first produced by William Henry Goss, 1833 to 1906, who was owner of the Falcon Pottery in Stoke-on-Trent, and it often had the heraldic crest of popular seaside resorts, um, and these were made easily accessible by the onset of railway travel in the 19th century. Um, they were immensely popular and thus copied by lots of other companies, so this isn't a Goss one, or it would have had the stamp on the bottom. Mm. But this is one of the many, many copies. And so this is very common must, still. Must have find. been annoying when they created these things and then someone yeah. just, other people came along and just copied well, them. when something's popular, it's bound to get copied. Yeah, that's true. Um, but we can cut this down. Like, I know it's, yeah, it's a bit knackered on the top, it's broken off, but um, we can really easily just cut that down. Oh, yeah. So last last time we visited that mudlocking spot, Mum found a piece of this. And, identical. Um, I, yeah, absolutely identical. And I found an even bigger piece. And there's the top of it, so I think they were mugs. Yeah. And they've got two a uh, beautiful depiction of a lady. There's a lady carrying a basket. And and then a lady with a flower, which Japanese is just... Japanese lady. Yeah, so Japanese pretty. lady. But this was not made in Japan, because when we turn it over... It says Tokyo established 1657, Adams, Tunstall, England. And Tunstall is in the Midlands. Yeah, the pottery. Surprise, surprise. Still <laughs> Trent. So, yeah, onto our bottles, which we've all found the same of before, except this one down here. And this is, it says Inecto. Inecto. And these came in amber as well, but I think the amber ones were a bit later. So this is an early Inecto hair dye bottle. And it probably dates from the 1910s to the 1920s. And this one has been grotesquely melted. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of love but it for that. I love it for that, really. 
it's cute and i'm tempted just to hang that on the christmas tree oh yeah we could yeah <laughs> just have a really like yeah yeah it's a melty bauble bottle but it would have been um like a little you know a, a collector's bottle yeah um, they should are we say collectible but not in this state but not in this state so yeah it's worthless like this but we love it we love it as it is and one of these is a Oh, we've got poison bottle. We've got a few of these bottled by Jay's. Jay's fluid, which you can still get. I remember washing the um, the goat house out with Jay's fluid when oh. I was a kid, <laughs> and the stables. It smells. It's got a particular smell. Okay, so this bottle here is a little bit different to um, what we usually find, and it's got something to do with the top of this bottle. So if I get these two bottles out here, um, you can see how it's like flat and smooth on the top compared to our usual bottles of this kind which are all jagged on the top and this is called a snap top bottle lip or finish as they're also known as um so this would have been blown this bottle would have been blown into a mold a two-part mold see the seam. and um taken out the mold and then on the end of the blowpipe would have still been attached to a blowpipe here they would have probably uh, either um, a really cold piece of steel um, or water dribbled it on and snapped it off that's why it's called a snap top and the top would have been really sharp and um, they would have then melted it really melted the top just to smooth it yeah, off a little just, bit yeah so melted it just sharp. a tad yeah so it's it's nice and smooth and not sharp so yeah that's a snap so that's top bottle that's a very interesting example of a snap top bottle it is isn't it and uh, these are the, probably the most common bottles made in the UK. The, the commonest, and cheapest. How are those tops just, made, Alex? Well, these are burst slip bottles. They would have been blown into a two pot mold, just like our snap top here. Um, a bubble would have been blown above the mold and basically snapped off or burst. Um, that's why it's called burst slip. And they were just left jagged like that because they held the cork really well. And um, yeah, they were just faster and easier to make like just that. Just cheap, cheapness. Yeah, they're just yeah. cheap, disposable bottles that weren't worth yeah. much. So interesting, the different methods. It of is. The, you lips. know what? There's so many different lips, finishes of bottles. There's just so many of them. So we might do a video. <laughs> we said it before. We would like to do a video on the different lips of bottles. Yeah, and the different kinds of bottles because there's just it's crazy just how much history there is in just simple bottles. Anyway, that's another story, but this is time for our piece de la resistance. I wouldn't try to speak French if I was here. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I can't speak French. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is just amazing and we love it. Um, so it's incredible. Alex found this whole I know. entire bowl. And um, we found this on our bead making video and actually some of these, a lot of these finds we also found on our bead making video, um, but we didn't show them because we were busy making beads yeah, on that video. It was video. just about finding the glass. It was just so. about the glass, but we did also find other things, but including this that we had to show on that video because it's just so amazing. But yeah, it's a sponge, a complete um, uncracked spongeware bowl and it just has one chip out of it there. Which we can mend. Which we can mend. We haven't just quite yet because we wanted to show you on this video. It's a bit crazed. It's got a lot of crazing it's in there. It's got a lot of crazing. But yeah. that's part of its its beauty. It's part of its story. And to have survived... I know. ...from the first half of the 19th century, probably made in Scotland, Scottish spongeware. And, um, yeah, to have survived that long... I know, and it might have just been thrown out in the 1920s, but yeah. still, it was in a river. <laughs> yeah, again, so you go to an old, a, a 1920s dump, it doesn't mean you're just going to find 1920s things. Because obviously, this They're throwing was... stuff out that's out of fashion, yeah, aren't they? Uh -huh. so, um, yeah, so... Old you... people die and all their uh, Victorian stuff Yeah, your grandparents out. die and you don't want their old um, Scottish spongeware bowl anymore, so you just chuck it out into the dump. But by miracle, this one survived and now we have it and it is cherished by and now us. it's ours <laughs> it's crazy this could be almost 200 years old yeah. i mean could be from about, about 1830s or 1840s how crazy is that this could be literally mid mid 19th century found in a 1920s dump so so cool
Really, really, really cool. Found in the 2020s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's spongeware. Maybe we should mention spongeware. It's literally... they got. Did. Yeah, but oh. how it was made. Um, but they got a bit... Literally just got a bit of sponge, cut a pattern out of the sponge, dipped the sponge in glaze and... Uh, in slip. Oh, colour. Yeah. Slip, coloured slip. And just, well, sponged it on to the cake. Isn't that what they called it? The cake? Um, I don't know. Yeah, they called the unglazed pot, the unglazed dish, the cake, and it would absorb the um, spongeware pattern really well. Um, but yeah. No, biscuit. It was oh, biscuit. Oh, biscuit. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I knew it was something tasty. I thought that's something. Cake. Didn't, and I was didn't like. Sound right. It was biscuit. <laughs> yeah, biscuit. <laughs> okay, guys, it wasn't cake. Maybe I'm just hungry and yeah. I fancy some cake. But yeah, okay, yeah. biscuit. Oh, close enough. It was, you know. It's confectionery, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we absolutely love this and we ha- we display it on top of the fireplace and it's just beautiful and amazing. Um, but yeah, that actually, um, maybe we should mention we're going to try uh, doing our own spongeware. Yeah, that's we are another... going to try some <laughs> pottery decorating. Maybe it's on some of our marmalade jars, but that's another video. We don't know if it'll work yet, so yeah. Anyway. Um, so... That's it um, for this week. It is. So all that remains is to say a huge thank you to everyone for yep. watching our video, for commenting, um, for subscribing. Uh, for dropping a like as well. Yes, <laughs> liking is very important to keep help keep us going. Um, and also all of our patrons on Patreon. Yes. Huge thank you to you. Massive thank you to our patrons. And to all the people who have very generous generously bought us stuff from our amazon wish list and donated some of you buy us still buy us um coffees on Kofi and yes. you donate via paypal um which is just yeah it's amazing and, and other people donate in um different ways as well yes so you do thank so you thank to you. everyone thank you so much and we'll see you again next week next week bye, bye.